Well, for all of you who have been waiting for our five minute beginner series on using the router in a router table, today is that day. Hello everyone, Colin Kinnett here for Woodwork Web. 80% of the things that you can do with a router, you need a router table. And today, we're going to show you in five minutes everything you need to know about using a router table. Now before we get started, I have to talk briefly about safety. And of course, safety glasses are imperative. Good hearing protection is important. And router switches are notorious for having hair triggers and very easy to switch on and off. And it's really important that you unplug your router while you're doing any adjustments or any changing of any bits. And the last thing you do before you start cutting with a router is plug it in. So that's the safety rules for all routers. The components of a router table are the mounting plate, and this is where the router is mounted underneath. These are throat plates. These are not the same as the zero clearance on zero clearance plate on your table saw. These are more of a safety uh, component so that wood doesn't get lodge down in here as it's being moved across. These miter slots are not for miter gauges. We never use a miter gauge on a router table. Instead, these miter slots are used for feather boards. We will not be using a feather board today. The final component is the fence. All fences are movable and adjustable. And the fence this adjustable part here, this is the part that is equivalent to the zero clearance on your table saw. This part right here. To install a router bit, we lock the shank, drop the bit in to the bottom, and pull it back about the thickness of a coin. Then we can hand tighten that, and because the shank is locked, Set the height of the bit, and I want this one a little on the low side. Right about there. Next, we need to adjust the clearance on the fence. The final adjustment is the position of the fence, and whenever we have a bit with a bearing on it, we need to isolate that bearing. I like to lock one side. The second side will pivot and I can align both sides of the fence with the bearing. And there you can see that ruler is lined up with both sides of the fence and the bearing. We always feed wood from right to left because the bit is spinning in that direction and remember, the face always bites the wood. There's the face, and that would be biting the wood. The safest way to push wood through the router is with a push block. And I make mine ahead of time. Make sure your angles are absolutely 90 degrees. And I mark mine with a felt pen so that I know that I've checked them. When you've done all your adjustments, the last thing to do is to plug in. Remember, we always do the edge grain first. And this is the perfect example of why a router table is of value. A little board like this you could not do freehand. It would be very dangerous to do, but it was a piece of cake on the router table.
And that's all there is to using a router table. It's actually fairly simple. Don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we ask you to do that. We ask you to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and in the fall, we're going to be doing a project of actually building uh, a little router table. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.